Hey guys, and welcome to my video on how to secure your Steam account and prevent it from being stolen or hacked. So we're going to break it down into two areas. Things you can do to secure your account now, and things you can do to stop your account from being compromised in the future. So part one of securing your account is getting an antivirus software. So the reason we're getting an antivirus software is to protect us against malware and viruses. So the danger here is that malware such as keyloggers are probably the most effective and probably the way 99% of people get into your account. So a lot of accounts aren't actually hacked. They're just hijacked by um, smart people who gain access to accounts from people who don't follow these pretty much the rules in this video. So um, antiviruses are like $20 a year. They'll protect your account overall. If you do online banking, it's a cheap and easy way to protect your account from people even getting access to your banking data, which is much more valuable than your Steam data. So, um, and put a note here, I you don't really need to pay more than $20 a year for antivirus, which is much cheaper insurance. If you have car insurance, this is a fraction of your car insurance and it probably protects just as much money or more. So, um, I use Webroot, it's under $20 and it's really good at, antivirus with active monitoring. You don't have to get Webber, but I'm not pushing it. I'm just making an example because it's the one I use and I know it's under $20. So the second important thing you can do is if you think your account is compromised, change your password from a clean computer. Um, the reason we say from a clean computer is because if your account is, if your computer is compromised and you change the password, you've just given them the new password after you change it. So. The goal here is to prevent users from getting access to your account. The danger is if your account is compromised and you don't change your password, then people can continue to use your account in, uh, for whatever means they are hoping to achieve. Um, and just a note here, even if you have two-factor identification, it is still in your best interest um, to change your password and to keep your password private because your account is at risk if it remains. Um, with the password compromised. The third thing you can do to secure your account is to deauthorize all other devices you're not using. So although it's a long shot, someone could pick up one of your old devices and use it to access your Steam account. Um, so you don't really benefit from keeping old devices on your account. So you may as well only have the devices you're actually planning to use on your account. So the goal here is to prevent people from logging to your account using your old device. And a security breach is that someone can bypass your two-factor authentication if they have that device. So lastly, um, if you're using backup codes um, for your Steam Guard mobile app, um, keep them in paper format and not digitally on your computer. Um, the reason I say this is I actually read about someone on the forums who had used his mobile app codes, put them in a Word file on his desktop, and then used them to bypass his two-factor. But basically, someone got access to that Word document, then had his all his mobile app codes, so they, could, they got into his account and stole all his stuff. And he was arguing that they shouldn't even have that available. So if you're going to use the service, be smart about it. So our goal here is to prevent users from bypassing your two-factor through compromised codes. Um, and the danger is you're essentially subverting your own two-factor um, by not following um, smart protection. So, And then a note here, if you think your codes are compromised, you can revoke them and create new ones. So that the mobile codes can be revoked at any time and then they can no longer be used. Feel free to, to remove them and get new ones on a timely as often as you would like. So those are the tips for securing your account. We're going to move into protecting your account. So the one most important best thing you can do to secure your account is to enable two-factor identification, also known as Steam Guard or Steam Mobile Authenticator. So it's essentially an extra layer of security um, because whoever wants to hijack or hack your account must have your mobile phone. And I'm saying your personal mobile phone. Um, there are ways around this, but again, it's a lot of work and they're probably not going to do it just to get into your Steam account. So anyway, 
The goal here is to prevent individuals from getting access to your account even if they have your username and password. The danger is if you don't have two-factor, someone who gets your username and password can log into your account and do whatever they want. Um, and just a note here, because I hear about this all the time, Steam, Valve, or any other party will not ask you for your Steam Guard code. So you do not need to give them your Steam Guard code if someone asks for it. If someone is asking you to send them your Steam Guard code, the reason they want it is so they can get into your account. There's no other reason um, for anybody other than yourself to use your Steam Guard code. And you should also not use your Steam Guard code to log into anything but your account through the Steam website. If you're trying to go on a third party website and they ask you for your Steam Guard code, they only want it to get into your account. Okay, moving on. Um, this is a big one and it works for any website. Um, create a unique password for related sites. So that doesn't mean you have to have a new password for every site, but if two sites are related, you should have two different passwords. Um, and make sure to change your passwords occasionally for important sites. If it's a form and you're not worried about it, you don't have to change the password, but like your bank account, your Amazon account, your Steam account, might not be a bad idea to change the password occasionally. So the goal here is to prevent individuals from gaining access to your name, name and password from the same account used. The danger is when signing up for a site, you often give away all your account details if you sign up for that site because the registration will ask you for like your username, your email, and your password. Okay, for example, I want to log into um, Bob's Steam community because all my friends are on Bob's Steam community. So I make my username in Bob's Steam community, which is a third party website. And my Steam name is Bob and my password is 123 password. Okay. So I make my account on Bob's Steam site and I'm put in my username Bob and I use the same password as my Steam account, 123 password. And then I even include my email, which also has the password, 123 password. So now I've just given the youth, whoever owns Bob's Steam site can now log into my Steam account and my email because I have basically given him all my login details by making an account on his site. So hopefully this is clear. Hopefully you understand my meaning, um, but um, vary your passwords a bit and you'll have much more success with them than using the same password for everything. This is a big one you see quite often. It's one of the easiest ways people can use to hijack your account. Um, using th unauthorized third-party sites. So, um, this is the biggest giveaway often is on the ribbon up here. You want to see a lock. The lock alone will not give you. So, because it could be a secured third party site, but that's the first thing you look for. If it doesn't have a lock, it's not Steam. You then want to closely look at the URL. Again, people can be tricky. They could have store.stream powered or storm.stream um powdered or like anything they can change. They can also make the site look exactly the same. So you really got to be careful, really got to make sure you're on the right site. Okay. If you log into a third party site and you realize you did it, change your password right away. Don't wait to see if they gain access to your account. Um, so the big third party sites is third party trading sites, gambling sites, any skin trading sites, um, unvetted gift sites, etc. Here's another example for you. A lot of verified good sites, in the example here, Steam Gifts, will use a pass through login. So, again, you still have to be careful with pass through logins, but usually you won't be tricked because pass through logins have a lot of personal information that third party sites like fake sites won't have. So you can still check the URL, but you're gonna look for things like this. If you know, if you learn what Steam looks like, you'll pick it up right away. You'll have your username at the top and here. You'll have your current um, Steam avatar. You'll also have something that tells you the number of m messages or notifications. 
and the balance of your Steam wallet. All of these things are things you can check to make sure you're going through an authorized site. You can also Google and say, is this site authorized? Is this site safe? If you went and looked at Steam Gifts, you would find probably thousands of confirmations that Steam Site Gifts is a authorized safe site. So just a couple things to look at about third party sites. So this still happens, but I don't think it happens quite as much as it used to, but it used to be a very popular scam on Steam. Um, people would send fishy links and they would actually come from longtime friends, people you've had on your friends list for months, if not years, if not decades. So um, this was a phishing scam. So kind of take a look at it, see what they're trying to do, and even type back and say, hey bud, did you mean to send this to me? This seems fishy. That's exactly what happened to me. Someone, this isn't the exact one, but someone, all my friends have sent me a link and it looked really weird. It was like, hey, come see, this is my favorite new website. I'm like, hey buddy, what's up? And he's like, oh, I didn't actually send that. I don't know what's going on. And then I got that like two or three times more over the next couple days. Cause every time someone clicked that link, it would affect their Steam account and send that message to all their friends. So just take caution, know what you're clicking and really consider what do I really gain? I get a free game, but it's probably not going to be any, it'll probably be a cheap freemium game that you don't even want in your Steam account. So just, just be mindful. Um, the fifth thing here, trade smart, examine trades carefully. I see so many posts on the Steam help about people who got scammed in trades. There are many warnings if you look and you trade smart. It's really almost impossible to get scammed if you're trading smart. So first three things to get to do. Who am I trading with? Are they reputable? Are they level one? Are they just have free games? Sometimes you look at an account and it's like, oh, they have 15 games in your account. But if you actually look at what games they are, they're all just free games you can pick up anywhere. They'll also usually be level one or quite low level. Like they won't be any usual level. Secondly, what am I trading away? Is it correct? Did I put the right item in the trade window? I get, I hear this one as well. Oh, I, I accidentally sent the wrong item. Well, it's not anybody's fault, but yours. So pay attention to what you're trading and pay attention to what you're getting. Don't fall for lookalike items. Don't charge fall for lower level items when you're expecting to get a high level or a better item. So just pay attention. Here's an example with Thrill Drive Home on the Steam warning system. So someone sends you an offer to trade for whatever reason, they offer you the items that you wanted, okay? And then they decline the trade. Then they re-offer you a trade again. The account that's re-offering you has the same name and looks the same as the previous one. So you offer your item and they confirm the trade without adding their item. You will then get to say these following warnings, okay? The user is not in your friends list. The user has a similar name to someone in your friends list. You will receive nothing. So what happened is they did an obvious bait and switch with you. They offered the trade with, with, a, with a vetted account and then they used a fake account to make a trade with you. This happens. People do it all the time. And even though this says you will receive nothing, people still confirm the trade because they're not paying attention. They think that whoever it was is being honest and is giving you your stuff. Okay, these warnings are in place to alert you that something is going on. Heed the warnings, examine each trade partner carefully, um, and be smart with your trades. So that's all I have for you guys. I hope this was insightful and helped give you some tips on what you can do to protect your account. Um, if you want to learn how to recover your account if it was lost, stolen, or hacked, you can check out my video here. Otherwise, I wish you all the best, and I'll see you in the next video. Later, guys.